This one for the black world. If you're a woman and you're black, I'm following back. Hey, my name is Carla, and I'm sending this shout out to all my sisters out here in TikTok land. Even some of my brothers gave me the numbers to get where I am now, and I'm gonna go live. I'm ready. I'm here, and I love to craft. I love to just talk. We are gonna chop it up. Thank you. During the pandemic, the black femicide rate drastically increased. A little under every five hours a day, a black woman or black girl is killed, typically by a black man. This is the story of Carla Jones. Carla Jones was a beautiful, vibrant, energetic, and talented 43-year-old mother. According to her social media profiles, she was born in New York, but was living and working in Baltimore. Although she was working full-time at John Hopkins Hospital, this entrepreneur launched a business that focused on creating custom crafts of clothing, hats, and other small items. Yeah, if y'all want to try to lose puppy like mine, come holler at me. It's, y'all, yeah, it's, y'all, yeah, I don't even know what to say because my lip popping. Sadly, Jones' life with her 26-year-old son was turbulent. The two lived together and would sometimes get into verbal disputes. On June 10th, around 6.33 a.m., Northern District Patrol officers responded to the 400 block of Lorraine Avenue for a reported stabbing investigation. Upon arrival at the residence, a man who was later identified as Carla's son, Alan Jones, was sitting outside on the front steps with blood all over his hands and clothes. Officers on the scene asked what happened and if he was injured. Alan confessed that he murdered his mother. When officers entered the residence, they found Carla lying unresponsive with multiple apparent stab wounds to her torso. She was declared dead at the scene. A day after her murder, one of Carla's friends who goes by the name of K Pretty Brown Eyes 2 on TikTok announced her passing and shared her grief and disdain for black men who are killing black women. I am here with a heavy heart, with a broken heart, with a shattered heart to tell you guys that one of my dearest friends, a sister, a little sister in my eyes was stabbed to death by her own son on Saturday. I'm just finding out today, found out on the family page that my friend is gone by the hand of her own son. She was only 43. 43. The son who she loved more than anything, her only child, who is profoundly mentally ill, decided that she was a witch and she was demonic and she was evil. So she had to go. Did I see it coming? Yes. Did I tell her? No. Because I knew she was determined to love her son. She was determined to be there for her son. She was determined to love her son back to wellness. And this is how he repaid her. Did I warn her? Absolutely. Time and time again, I warned her. I told her how afraid I was for her. But that was her baby. She had to save him. Her black son robbed the rest of her family, her friends, her co-workers who loved her, robbed us of her, of her light, of her joy, of her laugh, of her love for fashion and music, her love for deep conversations and her love for bullshit conversations. He robbed us of that. And he also robbed himself of a woman who loved him more than her own life. The message she would want me to give is when a man shows you who he is, believe him. Don't care who he is. If he shows you who he is, believe him. Please. Hey y'all, if you don't know what's going on, tap the comment and go back. Uh, short 
story is that I lost a really good friend of mine. A good friend is an understatement and one of my best, dearest friends to the hand of her own son. He stabbed her and she's no longer here. Um, and I wanted to comment on this. Please excuse the way I look. I mean, you, you know. But anyway, um, she said that it's getting scarier by each post. And in the original post, if you listen to what I said when I said her black son did this to her. And I said that on purpose uh, because it is getting scarier the underlying hatred for us, even in the 20 year olds with their mothers, and we don't know how deep it goes. It makes it scarier by each post, by each day, by each story of another incident of black femicide. And I also wanted, hold on. Sorry, had to get myself together. But I recently went on the Tom Joyner Fantastic Voyage Cruise for the first time. And if you know, it's one of the biggest cruises of the year. Then um, it raises funds for HBCU. It is a charity cruise, but it's a cruise of 98% people who look like us with money because it's expensive. And that cruise and watching those men on that cruise gave me hope, even if briefly, and it has turned out to be very brief, but it gave me hope that there are good ones out here because I saw them. I saw thousands of them during this trip. But then less than two weeks later, this happens, plus some other things have happened that just let me know that other than the ones that I saw who were mostly married and taken already, there's the hope. And if I did not trust BMs already, you know I absolutely don't trust them now. Everyone I encounter from now on, I will look at with a side eye. Because if you could do this to your own mother and then sit outside and wait for the police, an evil like that is not condensed. At this point, it's almost airborne. I said what I said. Thank you to everyone who has checked up on me. I'm taking it day by day, but more to come on that. Y'all know the drill. Tap the comment and come back. Not only will spirit, God, the universe, bring someone who is fucked up into your life, directly into your life, but they'll also put them around you. I have seen this a good portion of my life, like mostly all of one of the reasons I don't have children is because I watched from a very young age young girls getting into situations and having a baby and their whole life stalls, stops because a no good dude talked her into having a baby. And before some of y'all try me, you know good and well men can finesse their way into a child. Tell me I'm lying. But I watched dream after dream die because they were lied to. And I know they were lied to because later on in life, those same dudes tried to talk to me and tried to trap me as well. So I know what happened to them. And I never saw them happy with their children. I never saw them happy or joyous to be mothers. It was just a life of misery. So I knew that wasn't for me. Also around me, but not directly in my life, when I lived in Baltimore City and the women of Baltimore and how they do their friendship. They didn't like strangers. They didn't want to meet nobody new that no new friend, but would stay deadpan loyal to a friend who then had a baby by their man, who'd been creeping with their man, who done stole from them. All that will stay loyal to those other women because they know them. That lesson taught me displaced loyalty and how to never get so closed in that I don't leave my life open to meet new people to get new experiences or else I'd end up stuck and crazy like that. So sometimes it's not always the people that teach you about you. It's the situations they're in that teach you how to be a better you. You can tell by her photos and videos that she was a fun and cool person to be around. I'm sure she'll be deeply missed by her friends and family members. Rest in peace, Carla Jones.